Now, another aspect you need to be aware of are risk assessments. Um, and specifically, we call these curriculum activity risk assessments, CARA. Um, that's the acronym used within the Department of Education in Queensland. Um, and it's a process that's conducted to do a risk assessment on any curriculum activities where there may be some potential risk. Now, there are other processes that are for risk assessment when there are excursions and camps and things of that nature. But for in-classroom um, activities, we use the CARA process in Education Queensland. And private schools have similar processes. But essentially, a risk assessment is a formalised process that you've gone through to consider potential risks and to mitigate those risks. Now, a large part of it is to cover yourself if something does go wrong. Accidents happen. Things will go wrong. Now, as long as you've considered those potential risks and you've taken reasonable measures to mitigate against potential obvious um, risks, then you'll generally be supported by your school and by the department and so forth. So a large part of it is documenting that so that if something does go wrong, then you can show that you have been a professional and considered those and so forth. Now, no risk assessment process will eliminate all potential um, threats. Students being students may do things that you or no reasonable person could have foreseen, but at least you will have um, addressed and minimised the more obvious potential risks. So there was a general process to go through, um, identifying hazards, assessing the risks of each hazard in the context of where they're going to be um, done. So let's say students might be using scissors in your class to um, cut some material up, or they're using a hot glue gun. So these are things that obviously have some potential risk. So explaining to students how to use those particular tools, practicing them in the use and the safe use of those tools, monitoring their use of those tools. These are strategies that you can put into place to minimize those risks. So you determine the inherent risk of the activity and then you decide upon control measures and then you document that. And so if you've done that as a reasonable process, you're generally covered in terms of a risk assessment. Now, it doesn't mean you don't do the activity, but it may mean that you look for alternatives. Now, there is such a thing as a cold glue gun. So where it does still use glue and extrudes glue, but without the high heat involved. So that's a much better tool to be using in primary school settings than hot glue guns. There are safety scissors that have blunted edges and so forth. There are a whole range of different um, aspects that you can consider. So when you look at doing it, particularly design and technology activities, but digital technologies can also have risks. There may be psychological risks. There may be the risk of students seeing inappropriate material. So there are various other aspects that um, need to be considered in a risk assessment other than just physical risks, though that is certainly the majority of the focus. So we have what's called a hierarchy of control, where we look at the most effective um, strategies, which may be just elimination or not doing the activity at all. Obviously, that's an, um, something we'd want to avoid if possible, but it may be that just the risk is too great. Um, and so we don't do that activity, or we look at an alternative activity that doesn't have that risk. Now, we need to be careful with that, because it is very easy to fall into the trap of just eliminating all risk. Um, so, for example, not having students make anything, because there's always the potential, or making it all using plasticine instead of using wood or other materials, where they may not get the learning needed to really understand and achieve the um, content outcomes in terms of the curriculum that we really want them to do. So there does need to be a balance of some potential risk, but where that has been managed appropriately. Sometimes it involves substitution. We may use plastic blocks to build things rather than wood or metal or other material. Um, so like Lego or other tools of that nature. 
in electronics, instead of using solder and joining things, we can use magnets where the um, uh, devices can be clipped, clipped together. And that can definitely eliminate some risks. Sometimes we can isolate things. We can put up barriers. So let's say we're doing paper planes. So having the students all throw their paper planes in one direction with all the students um, against one wall can help eliminate a lot of risks in that respect. Or we could use eyeglasses, um, plastic safety glasses, to minimise risks of paper planes hitting our eyes. So there are various strategies that can be incorporated in your planning. Sometimes you'll need to redesign the activity. Sometimes it just might be a matter of administration where you're just watching your students and making sure that there's not too many students doing an activity at once that you can't watch them all and monitor what they're doing. And then there's use of personal protective equipment, such as the eyeglasses or gloves or various other tools and aprons and things of that nature. So this is a process you go through um, and you rank the, um, the risk from low, medium, high and extreme. And generally, if it's extreme, you would need your principal's requirement and parents' approval to conduct that activity. Um, if it's high, generally it's just principal's um, okay. If it's medium, your head of department or head of the curriculum area would give the okay. And if it's a low, then generally you can give the okay. And the, particularly in Education Queensland, there are a whole set of guidelines and examples that will rate different activities into those different levels. So you don't necessarily have to do the full risk assessment yourself. There are templates so you can see, OK, this is that activity. We're going to be using hammers and nails. What level of risk is that considered? OK, that's considered a medium level of risk. So I'll need to get the principal's approval to be able to do that particular activity. So have a look at some of the guidelines. Um, and that will give you an idea of what's involved. Now, there will always be some activities that aren't in the guidelines, but generally they'll give you an idea of what sort of, gui what sort of um, guidelines are needed for a particular activity. And if there's no guidance available, then you could seek guidance from your principal or your head of department or head of, head of um, learning area, head of year level. And at an extreme level, you may even need to seek guidance from the department. Um, so for example, I was um, teaching with some year six students, we were doing rocketry and we were launching rockets and that was off um, the sporting fields. So there were a whole range of risk assessments that had to be as part of that. But one of them was we had to get in contact with the Civil Aviation Authority. Of course, there was an aerodrome nearby and it was simply then negotiating with them and we found out that, OK, we had to call the um, airport, let them know we were going to be launching the rockets. They made sure that there were no planes flying over at that time and it was all fine to do. Quite a simple process in the end, but it was something that needed to be done for the risk assessment for that particular activity. So don't let risk assessments put you off. Um, they are there just to guide you and help you thinking about potential risks so that you can mitigate those. And of course, there's an incident reporting process, which can, over time, um, let other teachers know what uh, risks there were and what incidents occurred. And so we can then mitigate against those. So it's all designed to remove um, or make it safer for teachers and students to do the curriculum activities. It's not designed to stop you doing the curriculum activities, although sometimes it may feel like that.